Young women have been growing up with an indoctrination of what womanhood is and what it should be. They've been taught everything that is in direct opposition to the Word of God. Young women who want to be different from the world are rare, but they are real. On this rare but real podcast, Audrey Brogy will often be joined by her daughter, Grace Anna, and her daughters-in-law, Maureen, Kesset, and Marilyn, who desire to be discerning in a day when everything seems to go against God's design. Join them in the journey of becoming rare but real. It takes courage and conviction. And now, Audrey Brogy. Hey, I'm so glad you're joining us for this um, episode. Uh, And one of the things I want to do is continue the conversation from the last episode that I did with my daughter, Grace Anna, and we talked about children and working and how important it is to teach our children how to work and that they understand the value of a work ethic so that as they grow up, they um, are assets in in society, not just that we want to train them to be godly people, that they come to know the Lord. We share the gospel with them and we help them grow in that sense. But part of that is helping them um, to be productive in the world. We know, according to scripture, that that's what we are supposed to be as women. We're supposed to be productive and fruitful and we are supposed to work with our hands and we are to um, produce and do all the things that God uh, says we are to do. In fact, one of the ways he describes us and what he tells us to do is that we are to be workers at home. It's not about just staying at home, which our society calls women who are at home, their workers at home, they use the term stay at home mom, but really a, a better term, a biblical term is a work at home mom, but it, and not just that she's making money outside of her home, but that she is actually being productive in her own home, doing the things that God has called her to do. One of the things I love about this is, um, Two, because today I have uh, Kessid and Maureen joining me, and I want to start, uh, Maureen, by sharing this little story, because um, <laughs> the way that Jordan, my son, who married Maureen, uh, met her is because he was working instead of playing. <laughs> um, some of you may have heard, if you listen to the podcast, when Maureen shared how she met Jordan and all about their God bringing the two of them together. But uh, they actually met when they were nine years old, and it was because I um, someone had told me how this farmer needed some help picking strawberries, and he thought of our sons because our sons had done some work for him in the neighborhood, and he knew they were hard workers. And so he told us about that, and so I had my sons call. Maureen's dad. I didn't even know him at the time. We didn't know anything about them. And um, but w- but we had. Um, in fact, it was Jordan who made the call. He's the younger of, of my two oldest boys, but he made the phone call. But they were in it together. And um, because even in that, we wanted them to sell themselves for the work. Um, and uh, so he made that phone call. And it's interesting because it was because of that first job he had working outside of just the chores they do at home and the, what they were doing outside in the yard and all the things that we might have even paid them for to have extra income, not the stuff that you do is just because you're part of the family. Um, but then then they started working on that farm. And, um, and that's how he met Maureen. Um, and then, of course, Maureen has become my daughter. Daughter-in-law. So I just think that's kind of interesting how that all came about. And of course, with Kessid, you know, Jeremy was already out in the world working and uh, and she was, too, because she was a young working woman. And um, and they met at church and you can listen to those episodes. They're earlier episodes now. So today I have Maureen and Kessid and I'm not going to talk so much or I will. I might interject something, but I want them to share um, the ways that they are helping their own own children uh, learn to work and the things maybe they require of them and the things, the biblical principles they are teaching them, because we all know from Genesis that uh, work is um, not a curse. It is God instituted work ever before um, it became difficult. The first thing he gave Adam to do was to cultivate and keep the garden. And that was his job and to name the animals. And so that's all part of it. And it's very important that we teach our children these principles, especially
really because we're living in a day where so many children are growing up and feeling entitled to everything because everything is provided for them and they grow up and they don't have a healthy work ethic. So with that said, uh, Maureen and Kessage, y'all can talk, you know, together back and forth and share your children's ages and maybe talk about some of the age appropriate chores when you started things with your kids and what what's going on now. So with that, no further from me right now. Well, first, I want to say I enjoyed listening to your podcast with Grace Anna so much last time. That was just so <laughs> fun. And it was a good reminder for me. I'm like, yes, work is good. I'm going to go home and <laughs> we're going to whip things in the <laughs> Anyways, um, it did inspire me today. So we had a lot. Uh, I've coached the girls' basketball team. And so we had a basketball game and then. The oldest had like a lacrosse clinic to go to tonight. And uh, my husband had things he had to work on. And anyways, it was a busy day. And I looked and our laundry room was just piled with clothes. And there were piles of, un, you know, unfolded clothes. And I looked at it and I thought, oh, how am I going to get this? And I was like, wait a minute. There are four other people not working right now. And we are going to tackle this together. And it was so it was like, well, I mean, oversettle it. It was, it was, it was better than doing it by myself. There was plenty of complaining and of like, you know, razzing each other and whatever. But it was, it was like, oh yeah, this, I don't have to carry this burden alone. I actually, so you were talking about the ages. I have a twelve-year-old, a uh, ten-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a six-year-old. Um, all of them, all of them girls, and so everybody's getting real functional. Like it's, <laughs> we're getting into the, into the like actual helpful territory and less of the, Oh, thanks for your quote help unquote. <laughs> um, but yeah, sorry, Maureen, you, I mean, you also, your kids are far more functional than I have achieved in my almost 40 years. So no, that's not about true. Um, that is so true. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is true is that with Jordan and I, that our kids right now are 15, 13, 12, and 10. So, yes, they are old enough to have jobs and paid jobs and unpaid jobs. You know, when we, you asked when we started chores, um, the one thing I did hear last week with Gracie and us was she was talking about how Patrick, is too, has little jobs and responsibilities. And that's something I've always done when we've had new babies in the family. Like now you're officially in charge of getting the diaper or the burp cloth or carry the diaper bag. So teaching them from an early age that works important and that we all need to be a part of it as a large family, that we all make the messes and we need to help clean it up. Of course, there are jobs that I have as the manager of the home that the kids were not ever able to do when they were little and sometimes still don't even do them now. But, you know, with Jack and Luke, we had boys first. I mean, they've been mowing our lawn. I think they were a long time. I think they were five and seven. We lived in a different house. And I remember they were kind of picking at each other. Jordan was out of town. Our backyard needed to be mowed. It wasn't very large. It was fenced in. And I was like, hey, you two, we're getting the grass mowed. And they both, they were excited because they never got to use it before. But I literally went out and showed them how to mow. I was like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just work at it. But they loved it. And really since that day, they've never stopped. They've (laughs) always been our yard people. And now they help with, you know, other people's yards. And they've added pressure washing to their, you know, they do that for us. And they do it for many neighbors in the summertime to make extra work, to make extra money. To make Um, extra work, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, there's regular things that they have to do. They have to blow. They have to help wash the cars. They have to mow. They have to take care, obviously, of their own little areas. And then Claire and Grace are 10 and 12. And you catch them laughing as you're talking about the laundry. Because I feel like that's seriously my least favorite job as a house manager. Like, I do not like doing laundry at all. Any <laughs> component of it. And so I, when Claire, when Claire, since she's our third, several years ago, was like, the boys get to do jobs and earn money, and I don't have a way to do that. 
So I was like, ding, ding, ding. And I started <laughs> to show her how to do laundry. And I was like, if you can do this faithfully and do it the right way, like this can turn into a little job for you to help me when I need it. Yeah. So, and, you know, and they all do little things like, of course, there are things around the house, like make your beds and clean up your area. But they just, it's expected of them. They know to do it. Um, but then there are those things above and beyond that, you know, now I, my oldest daughter, if she has a babysitting job that she does regularly. Um, they bake cookies and sell them down the street. You know, they have little jobs to keep them busy. So, well, one thing I wanted to say when Kessa was talking earlier about, you know, getting the girls down to do the, it just makes me think of this when, you know, doing the laundry. Um, you know that, you know, the movie, the the Disney movie, Cinderella, when she's like scrubbing the floors and when she's, um, and she's like on the floor and she's singing and she's like cleaning the yes. floor and singing. I always used to think about that with, um, you know, when my kids were growing up, not the boys so much, but especially with Grace Anna, that I wanted to, to teach her that even when you're doing a task that's that's not fun and that even is very unglamorous, that you do it with with a sense of uh, uh, joy, that you, you can make things fun. And it reminded me of when, uh, and I didn't share this last time, and Grace Anna and I talked about it afterwards but when I was a child because when I was talking about how my mom would my mom and dad made us work we had to work from the time we were really little but one of the chores we had every night was we had to rotate who was cleaning up the kitchen and you know it's a family of six for us and um and it just seemed and I was I guess I just remember this one time when we had fried chicken mashed potatoes you know just the stuff that made the biggest mess in the world and of course it was my turn to clean up the kitchen and I remember saying again that's not fair you know she got salad night you know or whatever but anyway and, and then after the meal was over I was looking at all that stuff and I wanted to go outside and play which I did I went outside and I played and I left it and in my head I'm thinking there my mom can't stand seeing the mess she'll clean it up and my sister who loves housework or seemed to when we were growing up <laughs> she, I thought she'll do it too because she's kind and she'll just do it and I played and played and then when I came inside it was dark I mean it, I played until it got dark and I came inside and the kitchen was just the way I had left it. And except now the food was hard on this stuff. And I remember thinking, this isn't fair. And my mom said to me, it is fair. It was your night. And if you had stayed and cleaned it up right then, it would have been a lot easier to clean. Now it's a lot harder and you're still going to have to do it. And I remember stomping my feet and saying, that's not fair. And she said, it is fair. Because that's just the way she was about that kind of stuff. And so I just remember talking about the whole Cinderella thing. I just remember I thought, you know, well, I can either just do this and be angry about it, or I can do this and sing. And I sang. So, But it was no, a lesson right. I never I forgot. Think, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure, Kessie, you would agree, and so would Gracie, and if she was here, all of our kids at times, when they have chores that they're expected to do, and it's true for our family, too, dinner time, pick up. I think it's the job that they all dislike the most. It's like they've eaten mm. their food. They're ready to move on with the evening and <laughs> not clean up. And so Jordan and I have just gotten into a routine where we just literally pick two each night. And we sit back and we enjoy <laughs> sitting at the table and talking and catching up on the day while they pick up. And then they always kind of look at us like, are you going to do anything? And we're like, like no, no, we're not. Jordan doesn't do that thing of like <laughs> scraping some, di- you know, piling some new stuff. Say, hey, I've done half the job. From at the he does, the tell the, he does tell the kids that story about Carl, but no, so yeah, we were just talking about having basically having a happy heart with work. That That's you right. Do. That's right, because it, may, it makes it 10 times worse if you don't. And you have to have, and yeah. that that put, gets it back on us or y'all, especially because you're in this stage, that what you communicate to your children with the jobs you have to do speaks volumes to how they're going to respond to work and do the jobs that they need to do. So go ahead. That's and, right. And you had asked Kessit something. Yeah, and, Kessit, and, I was um, asking, you know, I went through a little bit and shared little jobs that each of our four kids have that mm-hmm. they're expected to do some of the jobs are paid or unpaid. But then I was curious to hear what your girls enjoy the most for work, whether it's paid or unpaid. Cause I know Lois has been like a mother's helper and mm-hmm. I think Ruth is now. Do you want to yeah. talk about that a little bit? 
Yeah. So, well, we it, at our house now we have like a chore chart, and it's every day during the week. It's the five weekdays. Here's your job, and and it rotates. So everybody has every job. So that there's no like, oh, that's not fair. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. And it's like, because, I mean, you can explain until you're blue in the face. Like, yeah, she's six and you're 10. So that you're going to have a different job. But there, so I just was like, okay, I'm, I'm eliminating that. They're all going to have the job. <laughs> Obviously, it's going to be what one kid looks like cleaning out the car and what the other kid looks like, it's going to be different. And that's fine. And working with them to help them know more and more. I mean, honestly, I still don't know how to clean a kitchen like Jeremy does. I mean, I do it pretty much every night, but like whenever it happens and he does it, I'm like, Oh, Oh, that's, (laughs) <laughs> well, I am so, his mother. <laughs> I know. Well, so I do. I I sometimes feel like when I'm training the girls how to do a job, it's like the blind leading the blind. I'm like, um, okay. <laughs> so here we go. But um, so they so they do that. It rotates every week. It's just clear. There's not even a discussion it's on the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. They've got their letter magnets, and they just it's what you're going to do. So that's been um really nice and helpful and it's been good because I can adjust it be like oh you know what I need one more day a week that the back porch is getting picked up or one more day a week that the laundry is like that we're going to fold laundry so um that's been good so for working for money that's funny uh I feel like for a while my girls were just trying to like fleece our neighbors it would be like (laughs) we're gonna we're gonna set up a stand we're gonna write a newspaper and sell it or we're gonna set up a jewelry stand and sell it and it's like I finally told them, I was like, girls, our primary relationship with our neighbors is not going to be economic. So (laughs) you guys are going to stop, like, making your homemade handicrafts and trying to sell them to the neighbors. Because I was like, once you find something that that I really believe is, like, a value add, then you can do that. So, and, like, what's something that would actually help people? And so being a mother's helper is a big one. Mm -hmm. I mean, just. Like, yes, moms need help. They need somebody to, like, come along. So that's one thing that my older two have both done. And then most recently, my oldest has been tutoring. And Mm -hmm. so we're part of a homeschool co-op, and there are lots of families, families from our church and stuff that are in it. And she's gone through the curriculum up through now she's in seventh grade. She knows the phonogram. She knows, you know, the Latin preposition. She knows that. So it's like you have a skill that is actually a blessing mm-hmm. to these families who could use some help working with things, uh, working on things with their kids. So she's doing that. So just thinking about like, how can I not just like make money off people, but like how can I use my labor to be a blessing to the community? Mm-hmm. I know there's another mom who her kids uh, wanted to do uh, just like, taken out and putting back the recycling and uh, garbage cans for neighbors and just something like that. So yes, I think there are some things that I'm like, Hey, I know you had my kid feed your cat. Like you're not going to pay for that. It took two seconds, like whatever. But then, Hey, these are some value added things that you can offer your services Mm -hmm. and people are, it's a, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. I would have loved when my, when, you know, they were younger to have somebody older, an older kid come in and say, Hey, let's work on that essay together. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, so, um, I think that I think that's great. I mean, I mean, really, that's that's just a great thing because they're not only they're helping a child and they're helping a mother, and they're yeah, helping right. the, yeah, and they're true. helping themselves because it helps yeah, them to totally. teach. And yes, of course, of course, they love earning money, and they're all yeah. so weird with money too. Like, just you know how people are. Where it's lowest wants to never send her money ever and then Ruth is just like milkshakes for everybody you know? <laughs> and it's like, I'm like are we actually getting a concept of money through our work I don't I don't know but hopefully we're working on that well, funny. yeah go ahead Maureen. and you know Audrey talking about the working to make money it made me think of you know early on with Jack and Luke started mowing our grass and then doing chores for other family neighbors and they started to earn money and then now we actually pay them for 
their labor jobs outside because it's a huge help to me and it's a huge help to Jordan. Mm -hmm. But it was also a great, Jordan was always looking for ways that the boys especially, because they're the oldest and he's a man, I'm sure, but it's like, hey, you need to understand the value of money and also that it's God who's blessed us with us. And not only that we get this huge blessing, but that the first thing we need to do with it is to tie it and mm-hmm. give it back to the Lord. Uh-huh. And so that was a huge thing for the kids at young ages to learn, you know. And sometimes, like, I think of some of my kids who took a little longer to get hired by people to do jobs, but they would get, you know, a birthday check in the mail from a relative. Mm-hmm. And it was like, hey, that's you've been blessed with that money. Why don't you tie that and give back to the Lord? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's also critical for us to teach our kids where this blessing of money comes from to begin with, and then how to tithe it. So that, that's also been a great, um, of teaching your kids early to work and Mm -hmm. just to be able, and I never, So wait, can I ask you practically about that? Because so we obviously like we teach our kids, 10% 10% of whatever you make goes towards. I, it's like, I feel like there's never cash on hand or never ones or never da, da, da. do you guys like make a special trip to the bank or do they have like a, an account that they tie so to, the, you know? So the old, the boys do have accounts now and what they'll usually do, this actually started with COVID and then when our church, our church still has been, it's been meeting since for a very long mm-hmm. time, but the giving has never gone back to, to how it place. used to be. Yes, right. it just it you eat, walk out and you can get your check or cash, or you can still give online. Mm-hmm. And so when that started to take place, Jack and Luke were like, "We have bank accounts now. We're just going to give online." Um, and so, and then there's other times where they'll just transfer money over to our account if they're at church and they didn't have cash on hand, because that is tricky. Like you can't Venmo your church. I mean, right. maybe you can, but, <laughs> um, so I'd say for the boys, they do typically give, you know, electronically. Then that's kind of happened with COVID. Although I will say we still like when we see that they get paid in cash, like Jack, I'm thinking of, he has this one job in particular that he does once a month. And the lady always pays him in cash. And so we encourage him to go ahead and give that, like the act of worship of giving into the plate when we walk out of the service. And then he usually is just like, you know what? I've made other money this week. I'm just going to tithe off of this cash that she's paid me with. Right. But sure, for the girls, Kessie, we've always kept this. Um, the jars? I think this actually came from me remembering Dad always, when he would get home from work, would always clean out his pockets and set all of the change that was in his pockets, like on the water heater, and there were some stray dollar bills. And um, and so I kind of started that. I don't. I think it was before we ever had kids. So we have this money cup, we call it, that always just has like bills and you can make change, change for the yes exactly oh. that definitely so, come from your side of the family because can you, carl <laughs> never has there's never been stray <laughs> dollars coins anywhere <laughs> ever. it's all accounted for right? every but time <laughs> so yeah but Tessa, that is tricky and i think it's going to become harder for them yeah. As, yeah and i guess you got jack's about to be 16 and just talking about you know possible as he calls them, real jobs, quote, that he can have, meaning not from us or from mm-hmm, his neighbors. Mm-hmm. And it's just how kids are paid now. It's not with cash. Um, right. So, yeah, right. we're going to have to figure navigate that. As I like the physical, like the act of having, you know, something on hand at church. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, no, it's the same. We give online, and I... I rarely have any cash. So that's, uh, we, the kids, they have a money box at church, but I will say I'm, we have not been good at like, at, we should just make it a Sunday morning. Like, okay, let's pull it together. The other thing too, is a bank. You, there's no teller anymore. You just drive yeah, up to the right. ATM. So it's and like, you can, getting you can only get twenties out of it. Yeah. Right. It's just not anyway. So I need to, I should probably just like pray about that. This is like a hurdle for us. And God cares about, 
their mm-hmm. heart towards him and right. money. And so, anyway, well, Maureen, didn't but, you um, didn't you establish when your kids were little, like the your jars with savings, tithe like savings, spend, save, give. yes, yeah, yeah, they have that. I would say Jack and Luke don't do that quite so formally anymore, mm-hmm. where the girls still do. I think part of it is it's probably still. Like the girls can make it cute, right? Like you can <laughs> right. take like a cute fancy, <laughs> jar, jar, like little jar. But that for them though, when the mm-hmm. boys were little, it was a lot of times just an envelope. But it was a reminder. I just got this cash from right. house sitting someone's dog all week. Right. I'm going to go ahead and take my ten percent out. Or whatever percentage, you know, I have one child that gives way more than that usually, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's just he was even, you know, about making change. And so, how God, it's neat to see how God will bless that. But I do think that we always, and I'm not saying we've never forgotten to remind them, but we typically remind them, like, what are you going to do with that money first? Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, they're all old enough now. And I don't even think it, neat to see how it's not even like making them and I don't want to say we ever used to like make them where it was like they were never mad to give in the offering mm-hmm. but it's neat to see when they just own it and it's like no this is something God has given me and blessed me with like this is a random job that I never imagined I was going to have God gave me all this of course I'm going to give back mm-hmm. but I think some of it you do have to train when they're little about who this really is and of course we're going to give that and of course then and Kessie you may have had these discussions too in your house I think all of our kids have asked well so does God actually need our money <laughs> like you know is, is like, like how is this going to God how are right. we accessing this yeah, yeah yeah right and so I feel like even that then lends itself mm-hmm. to have all, all other kinds of great discussions about you know, the church and the pastor. What God's word tells us about, yeah, about giving generously to take care of the needs of those who preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just things like that where it's like, yeah, God's word tells us about this. Well, and it Um, does. It comes back to how important you not only knowing the word of God yourself, but teaching the word of God to your children and then them them seeing you obey the word of God in that area as well. You know, because we can it falls on death. They say, oh, you should give you should tithe. But but we don't tithe, you know, and they see how important that is. I'm just saying that's it's like the whole ball of wax. And when it comes back to you. This is we sh- we're teaching you from the word of God. And there's so much in the Bible about money and the way we view it and how you send it on the head, you know, all the things that how God uses it. Then it, then then you rely on the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two edged sword. Yeah, you know, yeah. it pierces their heart. So they understand it's not just like, oh, I should do this. This it, it builds their faith in who God is and what he says, which is and there's like not nonstop opportunities. I feel like to, to talk about it. We were literally watching a movie the other night and um this character in the movie talked about you know how the land before people came in and and kind of stripped it of what it had like there were so many fish in the water a man could fish for one day and then spend you know the other six days of the week just you know enjoying life and making art or whatever and i was like hey guys why is that not a biblical concept so of course my kids love when i constantly interrupt and ask these questions but, and, and, you know, immediately they were like, yeah, we're supposed to work six days and rest one day. And mm-hmm. I think it's like God's word for that to be so foundational. It helps, you know, huh, there's more about like there being a four day work week now because with COVID we've seen that, you know, people like to not work as much. It was like, <laughs> yeah, newsflash that, you know, people are lazy. Surprise, surprise. But it's like, Hey, Six days of work. It's Saturday. You're having to do work on Saturday. Cry me a river. Like right. this is this is like how God instituted mm-hmm. things, and then the discipline of actually taking a day of rest to reflect mm-hmm. on God and to rest in Him, and know you know what? All of my labor only produces any fruit because of him anyway so i'm just gonna rest in him um that's it's a discipline yeah it is resting and working that's right um, but but i think yeah. i also want to because i think about you know listeners and i know as a young mom you always have all these questions that are not black and white in scripture like when's the right age to make a more 
what should they be paid for versus not paid for? What constitutes a chore as just part of being a family versus not? And I kind of, as I listened to the majority of Grace Anna's podcast last week, I was just thinking, you know, being reminded again that the two-year-old was working, like, of course, like Patrick isn't earning money for going and putting Grace Anna's keys up on the keyboard, but it's like the idea that from as little as they can be engaged and they actually think work then is fun to help their parents to give them little jobs. And then they come back and they're so excited mm-hmm. and you celebrate that with them and tell them they did a great job and they listen and they put it where you're, they were supposed to. I mean, I just remember that. And, you know, our youngest here now is 10. So it seems like so long ago since we've had a two year old, but just how, if you're with your kids at home and teaching them all the things that go that are a part of life, you know, if you have boys teaching them different, you know, more work that's labor intensive that they can do because they're naturally more stronger Mm -hmm. versus, you know, I also have taught my boys like all the household stuff that the girls know, because I'm like, there's no, you're not promised that you're going to have, someone you could be single for the next 20 years and you need to know how to do all these things like we're not going to rely on someone else like you need to know across the board but the biggest lesson I think as I thought about it this week after listening to your podcast last week was like I think for me as a Christian teaching my kids to work I it's like I liked it and I enjoyed it but then there were pieces of me that God had to like refine me and just strip away so much light. I would get so annoyed sometimes because it would take longer than it should normally take. Or like my personality is like, I'd rather just go ahead and do it and get it done. Like, and then it looks the way I want it to look. So Kessa, when you made that comment about your chore chart, and of course, when your six year old's doing a task, it should, and it probably does look way different than when your 12 year old's doing a task. But then you resting and being okay with that, like that was actually really hard for me as a young mom, an area where I was always like having to like ask the Lord to help me to not be frustrated, but to allow me to be faithful, to teach them and to praise them where they've done things well and to Mm -hmm. keep going through it. So, I, I mean, I would just encourage like moms, as soon as your kids show interest in wanting to help you, let them and then. Also, and Audrey, I feel like I've heard you say this so many times, like, just sit down with them and teach them. Mm-hmm. Like, don't just throw out a task that they've never done before and expect it to look like you've done it. Mm-hmm. But instead, just it's going to be more effective if you sit and take the time. Like, I think about showing Claire and Grace how to fold clothes. Mm-hmm. Like, sure, I want them just to, like, fold them and be done with them. But it's like, no, this is how you do it. If it's inside out, make it right side out, then fold it, then put it in the proper drawer. Because then they just learn that and they know it and then it is done really well and everyone's happy. And sometimes so, people think those things are so mundane and that's why so many women don't want to do them or they think, oh, high power being noticed is so much more important. But but that's it's the small mundane things that teach us the most and they all need to be done. You know, we all appreciate we all appreciate, you know, having clean, nice folded laundry. Someone has to do it. You know, we appreciate that stuff. We appreciate so many things. And part of the process with little children is teaching them. And it takes our time to do that. I mean, we, you know, it just takes time to do it. And sometimes it's like, I think all of us feel that way. I mean, as young moms, sometimes it's like, oh, I just want to get it done. But the process is so important, you know, that that is my job. That's not even, you know, I mean, y'all know me. I don't. I don't take that much pleasure in very neatly folded laundry. And frankly, like I wouldn't, I, I don't really care in terms of like the, uh, the quality of mm-hmm. which I should, and we're working on it. But for me, the hard part is like, Oh, but I've been like teaching you other stuff all day. And now you want to help me in the kitchen and it's five thirty, And I, I would like to not be interacting with another human being right now. And so that is like, I mean, that's work for me. It's my work that God's given me to, okay, in that moment, I'm going to engage you. And I don't, I don't feel like teaching anymore right now, but you're here and you're interested. And so even though I'm tired and even though I don't 
necessarily feel like doing this. Like I am a follower of Christ and I have Mm -hmm. his spirit and he can empower me to do things even when I don't feel like Mm -hmm. it. And so that's, I mean, that's something I have to like tell my girls and tell myself. I, I seriously remember sitting in our little apartment in Cambridge and, uh, you know, we had a little two bedroom with three babies in there and I was looking around, I was like, it looks like a bomb went off in here, but it was the end of the day. And I was like, I am so tired. Jeremy was still over at the law library studying. I'm like, I don't have it in me. And I thought, wait a minute. Like this has, this needs to get picked up. I, and I am a daughter of the king and he has all the power in the world. I can get up off this couch and I can say he can empower me to do what has to get done. And this house needs to get picked up and just being like, Oh yeah, I don't have to just like sit there and listen to how I feel in the moment. I, I have access to more than that. And Mm -hmm. so I feel like that for me is a big thing in work. Just like, Oh, I don't feel like doing it. Okay. But I can, right. Because it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And not, it doesn't always need to be done. Sometimes right. it's like, you know what, that can wait. And I can just relax for a minute. Yeah, but absolutely. Sometimes it's like, yeah. no, you, anyways, so that's just like knowing that we are not slaves to our flesh mm-hmm. and to sin, but that we are free and we are mm-hmm. free to work. And that's a good thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and that makes me anyway. think of, uh, again, like you just said, Kessa, there are times where you can't just shut the door on something and say, I'm going to finish that tomorrow. But then a lot of times I've tried with my kids over the years, like, okay, I, we always, I think about the beginning of the day, I'm always asking my kids, okay, what do we have going on? What do we have to get accomplished? What extra things do we have today? And then it's like, what chores do we have today? And it's, those are always the things that are easiest to push off, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, the girls and I now are predominantly home the most because they're still homeschooled and I'm home with them. And it's like, no, let's just go ahead. Once we, you know, have time in the Word and we have time together before your classes start, let's get our boarding chores accomplished. It's better now to do it. And so just teaching them, get the stuff done, almost to like complete the task that you don't love. Just go ahead and wrap those up. And then you're free to go on with your studies or to read or go ride your bike. The things aren't weighing over your head anymore. Just to, Mm -hmm. because there Mm -hmm. is always that temptation of like, I don't want to do that. Or I don't feel like doing that. Or actually, I mean, there's been many a times over the years of being a mom where I think, man, I literally had nothing to do with this mess. Like, and it's just destroyed, <laughs> and no one's home, and I need to clean it up. Like, but I always go back to that, you know, in Proverbs, that verse where it says, Where there are no oxen, the manger is it's clean. clean. And at that, mm-hmm. the Lord, that verse, like, hit me in the face. I think Jack was like three, and Luke was one, and I was pregnant with Claire, and everything was a mess, and it was just like a lot going on. But I was like, I want there to be oxen in my house. And one day they're going to all be gone. And yeah. I can sit around and see my perfectly placed pillows. But that's not really what matters. Like, right. there are going to be messes. People create messes. And so rather than just, like, getting mad about that, and that doesn't mean that when something gets broken for the 50th time, it's not frustrating. <laughs> but it's like, just like you were saying, Kevin, submit to the Lord and knowing that he's called you to be a worker at home. He's called me. Same for you, Audrey. Let's do the job that we've been given and do it well. And I mean, that's also, and Kevin, I'm sure you do this with your girls too, talking about, you know, we our husbands leave in the morning and their dads and they go out and they work hard to provide for our families. Some days, some weeks are way longer than others for them, but they just come home. And they're like happy to see us and to be with mm. us and they love us and they provide for us. And I mean, I really, I often, I mean, sometimes I think like, Oh, do you ever get irritated about the mess in here? And it's like, no, like I, like Jordan is such a good example to me of like, you go out and actually I always laugh and think like do the work and have to put up with all this stuff. Yes, you enjoy it too, but it's like all the things that go along with, a man supporting a family and the weight of that. 
but you can come home and let's have this place like picked up and nice and wonderful. That's so actually I wrote that down to remember to talk about that. That's one thing I learned as a new mom, like, and I would encourage all of you moms listening, like make your home such a place to not just for your guests to come in and feel like loved and it smells good and cookies are baking, but like <laughs> you and your kids get excited for when your husband comes home from work. And like, I remember when they were little, it's like, let's take five minutes, you know, put everything away where it needs to be and have the table set. And then dad comes in and it was exciting for them. And it changes, of course, as the kids get older, like, they're not all at the back porch anymore, like chewing their fingers for them to like come into the door. But like they do still, it's like we're going to take 10 minutes and round up and get this place whipped into shape. And then we're going to sit down and eat with dad when he comes home from work. And I just, I feel like that's important too as moms and wives to teach our kids like that their dad is going out and working hard to support their mm-hmm. family. And like, mm-hmm. let's make our home a welcoming place for him to even enter into. So that was just another, I wanted that's to make great. Sure. Yeah. Cause I learned that yeah. a lady, I remember at church taught that and she was probably 75 at the time teaching that, that she's always been able to do that with her kids. And I was like, I've never even thought about that. Like, I mean, if anything, I used to think, well, these are just as much his kids as mine. I've been with them all day. Like, I want to go out when he comes up. Poor Jeremy. I like he right now because of COVID. He's just like stuck up in our bedroom all day, every day. So there's like, there's there's no escape from the like permanent, you know, chaos that's happening mm. in the house. Um, but this, I was just thinking about that too, and how. Uh, never ending work can seem like I think that's one of the lies of a really of Satan to like really frustrate and undermine moms. It's like, oh, I mean, moms are even in that job. Like, I remember one of my jobs in DC where one of my coworkers just drove me up the wall. And you, j- it feels like this is how it's always going to be. And it's so frustrating. This is how it's always going to be. And then the next thing you know, it's not. And I wonder, like, Hey, did I miss out like making an impact for Christ on that coworker because she bothered me Mm. or I'm getting rid of like some board books. I'm like, Oh man, that just like went by so fast. And I like, I don't regret a single second sitting on the ground reading board books with these kids. I just wish I had more minutes to do that. And it's like, this is, it's like John nine, right? Where it's like, Hey, like work while it's day because night's coming on and these, these, the ability to work, these children in our homes, these coworkers that we have, this is for, it's going to go by so quick mm-hmm. and night's coming on. So we need to work while it's day That's and right. like seize these opportunities. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, y'all brought up some, I mean, I was just thinking when y'all were talking a little bit about how some of the things you've raised would make a great next podcast, even the, even the things about, you know, how moms worry sometimes about stopping what I'm doing to take in this and putting off when y'all were talking about, oh, some of these chores, I can put them off to tomorrow because we need to do this. And all of that's super important, too, of knowing as you grow in Christ and as you grow in, in maturity, of knowing when it's okay to set this aside or it's okay tonight not to have, like, I need to, I'm going to put the meal together myself, but tomorrow night I'm going to have you help me and we're gonna you're going to plan the meal and we're going to do it together. Or when I need to stop the cleaning and scrubbing because that can wait till tomorrow because babies grow up, you know, that uh, poem <laughs> of, of learning learning when to set things aside when not to set you know all that stuff is that are all of the uh the wisdom issues of life you know they're the as you as you grow as you understand more and more of the scripture that's why i'm always even as an older older woman always saying be in the scriptures be in the scriptures be in the scriptures because that's where you're going to learn that's where you're going to get your wisdom whether it's you're reading proverbs every day it's like god illumines things and he illumines it his word in the actual moment that you're experiencing and you're wondering i'm not sure what i should do in this moment but lord i need your wisdom and then he helps you because you've asked for him because he's near draw near to god he'll draw near to you even in the moments when you're not sure should i put this aside or should i not put this aside should i let this child 
God help me now? Or should I do this? Or, you know, it's like, that's, that's not in the Bible, you know, to say, now, when your child does this, you should do this. (laughs) But it is in the Bible to ask him for wisdom in those moments. And then he brings his word to your mind. Um, But anyway, y'all said some great stuff. And, um, and I'm, I don't know, I just, as we're bringing this thing down for a landing, I think I'll, just pray for our, the women out there. Pray for y'all and pray for the women who are listening to this and that God would use this podcast, um, you know, to encourage them uh, and to and continue to encourage us, even me in my stage of life, every time I have the grandchildren, because you, you want to talk about that work while it's day. It's like every time I have my grandchildren for periods of time, I think, oh, it's like all the years I raised my children squished into a week. And so it's like, I want to make every moment count, you know, like, and I mean, I don't mean that in some legalistic way. I just think I've got a week with these children and I want to invest like a grandmother should. Carl feels the same way, you know, whether we take them to meet the pastor or whether Carl has them out there on the tractor dragging limbs down to the brush pile or, you know, whether the girls are helping. Memorizing scripture. Exactly. And I, yeah, yeah. yeah. all that is just like, we're going to do these things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's right yeah. <laughs> that's right and so yeah so so much i mean y'all and y'all have a lot of wisdom just in the stage of life that y'all are in and and of course i know they're my grandchildren but they're real, all of them are just like, <laughs> they really are like great <laughs> they just are <laughs> and they're um and they don't even know i mean all of our grandchildren have no idea what they mean to us and 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 just as a reminder, if older women are listening and they have grandchildren, pray for your grandchildren, and it's, but especially mm-hmm. pray for their parents as they're raising them. Mm-hmm. You know that um, that they that God just will help them. You know, and that they'll grow in the um, knowledge, knowledge, understanding, and uh, and that God would help them with wisdom as they face the days. Well, let me pray, and then we'll. We'll bring a, this um, podcast to an end. Father, thank you so much for the time that I've had with my daughters-in-law today and being able to talk about the work ethic and the things they're doing with their own children. Father, I'm so grateful for them. I'm grateful for the way you brought them into my son's lives and and how they are helpers to them. Father, I just you've just answered so many prayers, and I just thank you for that. And I pray that you continue as they shape and mold their children, um, that you would give them the wisdom that they need as they face all of the decisions, every single decision, whether it's about their children's education, whether it's about their children's work, whether it's about having fun with their children or just getting God's word into them or just the life issues um, that they face as they navigate these years and these uncertain times in which we live. So we give you that. We know that your word teaches that you are faithful to every single generation. I um, That is just a, what you've told us all throughout your word. Um, and we hang on to that and we claim that and we trust you with every day that unfolds. And not just every day, but every single moment. We need grace for every single moment that we walk in this earth. So I thank you, and um, we look forward to what you're going to do in the lives of even all of the women who are listening to this podcast. We pray you be honored and glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you enjoyed this episode of Rare But Real, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when a new episode is posted. And share this podcast with friends. Follow Audrey on Instagram and Facebook at Mothering from the Heart. And listen to all her messages on the Search the Scriptures app.